Hi, this is Chi Hong Yun from the University of Hong Kong. Today I'll present our paper, Compass Seal Knowledge Proof for Threshold ECDSA with Trustless Setup. This is a joint work with Han Dong Shui and Xian Xie from Matrix Elements Technologies. In this paper, I'll first give a very brief introduction about what is special ECDSA and why additive homomorphic encryption is used. After that, I'll talk about the main contribution of our paper, which is a seal knowledge proof proving the discrete lot relation in some HSM group and the correctness of some cipher tests called the CL encryption. And then we'll see how they can be applied to two-party ECDSA as well as threshold ECDSA. So firstly, what is threshold ECDSA? Actually, threshold signature allow n parties to share the message signing ability without trusting each other. Such that if there are n parties there, then with less t or less than t parties, they cannot jointly generate a valid signature. Only with more than t plus one users, they can jointly generate a valid special signature. And threshold ECDSA signature is useful in practice. For example, in the setting of t is equal to one and is, n is equal to three, it can be used for hot wallets of a crypto exchange company, such that the company holds SK1 for online transaction, and they keep SK2 as a paper form backup, and then um, the separate security firm will hold the SK3 to validate transactions. So in this system, they need two keys to sign a transaction and losing one key from the exchange or the security firm cannot compromise the security of the hot wallet. And that's why threshold ECDSA can be useful in practice. Currently, how threshold ECDSA is actually implemented in some of the existing blockchain, um, they are done in a trivial way. That means that if I set the threshold as T, so we need to append T plus one ECDSA signature, and we need to verify them one by one. So um, it is highly inefficient and it costs quite a lot in terms of transaction costs because um, this transaction fee in a blockchain transaction is related to the size of a transaction and that it is dominated by the signatures there. So appending T plus one signature is obviously not the best solution. And in this paper, what can we achieve? So the goal, the final goal of a scheme is to improve the efficiency of the CK proof in two-party and special ECDSA because they are the most complicated part in these protocols. And when applied it to two-party ECDSA, um, the bandwidth of the QGen is decreased by 47%, while the running time is much faster in both keygen and the signing part. And when applied to special ECDSA, we have two solutions. Scheme one, they are very optimized for keygen. 70% um, less bandwidth and 85% faster than the existing works, but at a cost of higher 20% larger bandwidth in the signing part. So it may be good in some case, but not good in some other case. So we also propose scheme two, which provides an all round performance. So we have 60% um, less bandwidth use with 46% faster in key gen without any additional cost in signing parts. So how do we achieve it? So actually, um, we achieved this because um, many CK proofs are involved in two-party or special ECDSA. And we want to improve the implementation of the existing CK proof in those existing work. And this is one example of special ECDSA in the PKC 2020. So you can see that they use a CK proof of discrete log relation in the key gen part. And they use a CK proof for some cipher test in the signing part. And this is the most um, computationally expensive and the bandwidth, um, they use quite a lot of bandwidth in this part as well. So the, um, they are, these protocols are dominated um, in running time and the bandwidth by these proto CK protocols. And we want to improve that part. And before going into further details, um, we just give a very brief introduction of the addictive homomorphic encryption used there. Some of the earlier papers, they use Paley encryption for that. But some of the recent papers, they use a um, addictive homomorphic CL encryption, which is based 
on an unknown order group G, which contains a subgroup F, which is a known order subgroup, and the discrete law problem is easy to compute in this subgroup. And this group um, is based on the hardness of a so-called the hard subgroup membership problem. So we simply call this kind of group the HSM groups. And it can be constructed from some class group of uh, imaginary quadratic fields. Um, the CR encryption has certain advantage as compared to the Paleo encryption, like generation of the class group does not require transfer party, and the group elements in the class group is smaller than the Paleo group elements, and so on. And we will not go into um, further details about the how it is constructed mathematically. We just need to remember that um, the group G there is construct. Uh, they have a subgroup F. And in that particular subgroup F of known order subgroup, the discrete law problem is easy to compute. So we just need to memorize this fact. How about the CR encryption? Um, we also don't need to remember the details. We just need to remember that, okay, this form, the cipher test in, is in this form. To encrypt a message M, we use an encryption randomness of rho, such that we compute F to the power M times PK to the power rho. This is the C1, and C2 is another generated GQ to the power row. Remember, F is the part that this quick lot is easy to solve. Just need to remember this one. And this is just showing that it can be compute adaptive homomorphic operations. So um, let's quickly go into the uh, main contribution of this paper, the CK proof part. So what do we want to solve? We want to solve that uh, two, for two relations we want to show. The discrete log relation of some unknown order group element, such as this one, pk is equal to some generator to power sk. Or the relation about the well-foundedness of a CL cipher test. C1 is the encryption of the message together with the encryption randomness row um, using some proper key pk. So this is the um, second relation we want to show. How about the existing work? Um, in crypto 2019, um, they use a CK proof of a single bit challenge, such that um, if you want to achieve a soundness of two to the power minus epsilon s, then the protocol has to be repeated for epsilon s parts, then it is highly inefficient. And this is uh, how they use for both um, the relation one and relation two. And in paper two, um, PKC2020 paper, they are tackled them differently. Um, for the DL relation, they use the LCM tricks, which reduce the number of repetition um, by 10 times. And they also tackle the um, CL cipher test problem by using some new assumptions, the strong roots assumption in the HSM group, and we will look into the um, further details uh, in the next few page. So let's see what are the existing uh, problems. So the CK proof for the discrete law, um, originally, if we want to achieve a sinus error of 2 to the power XT, then we need XT times for uh, one bit challenge. And then by the um, scheme in PKC2020, it will reduce by, the repetition is reduced by 10 times. So we need X times for running the same CK protocols. But again, it is still not uh, quite a lot of cores needed in terms of bandwidth as well as computation times. So you need to repeat the process for eight times also. So we want to um, reduce it to one time only. So this is our first goal for the DL relation. How about the second one, the CL cipher test? Actually, the problem of um, the uh, reference to here is that it does not allow a fast and trustless setup. So um, why is that? It is mainly because they use an assumption called the strong roots assumption. And this assumption states that when given a random group element w, it is difficult to output a group element u and an integer e such that u to the power e is equal to w. So this is something similar to a strong RSA assumption. But here, we request that w is a random group element. But however, this random group element um, cannot be easily obtained. It can either be uh, obtained from a standardized group, so we assume that all parties, they trust some standardizing authority, then they can use this. 
But again, this is not desirable for the applications like public blockchain, where no trust third party exists. Then the next available option is that um, all participating parties, they can jointly generate this um, random group element interactively. But again, this solution greatly increased the run complexity and the bandwidth used. So um, no perfect solution uh, for this one. So let's see how we achieve that. So we first um, illustrate how a simple DL relation can be proved. Um, in our case, remember this is an unknown order group, so the discrete lot is not easy to, um, to prove. And also in particular, um, the diff main difficulty here is that um, the group G, they have a subgroup F, and it makes the CK proof much more complicated. It can be illustrated by the following example. So assume that we use um, an assumption used in um, some of the previous work, we call the adaptive root assumption. We try to use this one to make a um, algorithm one, this uh, a simple CK proof. So what is the adaptive root assumption? This assumption states that um, for a random group element G, uh, sorry, a random group element W, when you are given a prime L, you cannot output some U such that U to the power L is equal to W. So it means that uh, computing the L roots of W is difficult. So this is the adaptive root assumption. So um, if, we, if we simply use this one to give a CK proof, it can be done in this way. So the verifier sends a random lambda bit prime L, and the prover simply needs to find the quotient and the remainder of the X, such that X is equal to Q prime times L plus R. And the prover computes the capital Q is equal to G to the power Q prime. And also they will pass the remainder to the verifier. The verifier just check the range of the remainder, as well as checking this relation. The capital Q to the power L times G to the power is equal to W. So it makes use of this adaptive assumption um, to show the correctness. But however, if this group G here has a non-order subgroup, this CK proof is not secure at all. Why is that? It is because um, we can give some proof which pass this protocol, but the W is not the same. It's not G to the power X. In fact, if W is equal to G to the power X times F to the power Y, where F belongs to some known order subgroup, then he can compute an alternative proof Q prime here, which is equal to G to the power Q prime times F to the power Y over L. Why we can compute this one? Because one over L um, ca uh, is, can be computed um, because the order of F is known here. So this is 1 over L mod the order of F. So it can pass the verification because we can simply plug in everything there and then we can see that it passes the original verification equation as shown in the last page here. And the R also fits the range. So it can pass this checking. But we, W is not the relation we want to prove. W is not simply G to the X. W is G to the X times F to the power Y. So the relay, so this is not secure at all. So next, I will show why we can achieve this one. We can eliminate this attack. So our solution, roughly speaking, is to use an extra run of challenge to eliminate the elements of all the Q in W. So this attack appears because we have some elements with known order. So we want to remove all those elements with this known order here. So what we do here is simply use an extra run um, using the prime, the order Q here, or instead of using the prime number L. So here you can see a protocol with six steps. Well, while step five and step six, and also part of the step four, is the same as step one, two, three in algorithm one. So you can see that the last three steps are the same. So the main modification is the addition on the first three to four steps. So what is done here is that um, the prover computes a commitment, R is equal to G to the power K first. 
then the verifier computes a challenge C, and then the prover computes something just like a snow signature, as it is equal to K plus CX. And then the prover needs to find um, the quotient D and the remainder E such that S is equal to DQ plus E. So here, this format is similar to this one, Q prime L plus L, but we replace the prime L with a fixed prime Q, where Q is the order of the subgroup. So we send the, the capital D and small e there, and the checking is similar as below. So this is a six-round protocol. So why we, it is safe against the previous attack? So if the prover knows x, y in this format, he can, if n, if he can pass the verification, it means that, so here you can see that on the left-hand side of the equation, there are no elements with in the subgroup because here, um, capital D to the power Q, um, this Q is the order of F. So all subgroup elements is eliminated by the Q there and G is not the subgroup element at all. So we have no subgroup elements um, on the left-hand side. So it means that the right-hand side should not have any subgroup element as well, if we can pass the verification. So we can see that what are the subgroup element on the right-hand side? So it is F to the power CY. But if we do not have any subgroup element there, it means that F to the power CY is canceled out by R. But um, by the setting um, of the zero knowledge proof, R appears before we know C. So R is the commitment, C is the challenge. So the probability of this R cancel out F to the power C Y is negligible. That's why our protocol is safe against this attack. So we can achieve a run-run protocol for proving the, this DL relation in the unknown order group. So let's compare a scheme with um, the two previous scheme on the same soundness error and statistical distance of activity. So compared, uh, you can simply see that our scheme is much more efficient. 97% shorter than the CCL plus 19 and 74% shorter than the CCL plus 20 paper. So this, is, uh, this shows our scheme is highly efficient in terms of bandwidth. How about other comparison? So um, when we look into the assumptions, um, the CK proof in, um, in the CCL plus 20, um, they use a strong roots assumption, which is similar to the strong RSA assumption, as I mentioned. And we use an adaptive roots assumption, which is more similar to the um, RSA assumption. So this is comparison on the assumption side. And in the CCL plus 20, they use a CK proof, but they only prove the, no, uh, the relation of a modified version, which is x to the power y is equal to g to the power x for some proper value y. They are not proving h is equal to gx. They are proving h to the y is equal to gx. So the relation is a little bit modified. And on the other hand, our security proof, we need to use generic group model, but the security proof in two does not need that. So these are the difference between our proposal and the previous work. This is the first contribution. And the second contribution of our paper is the um, CK proof of a well-foundedness of a CL cipher test. We call that a CL cipher test is something in this format. The C1 is the encryption of some message M together using some encryption randomness row here. And C2 is also using the encryption randomness row. So again, the proof here for building the CL cipher test is quite similar to the DL proof, but we only need to take care of this term M there because M is something related to the unknown order group. So um, we can build a similar six-step protocol for the CL knowledge proof for the CL cipher test. So this is a um, diagram for that. And for details, you can refer to the paper. But um, the idea is quite similar to the um, DL part. So let's look at the comparison. There again, there are two existing work, um, the um, Crypto19 and the PKC20 paper. Um, we can see that. Um, the Crypto19 paper is not efficient at all. They use uh, more than 100,000 bytes for, uh, for the communication, um, but they don't need any extra security requirement. Our scheme is somehow in the middle. 
And we need two assumptions. One is the gener generic group model. And we also need to um, ensure that the proper key is generated correctly in the correct group element. So this is what we need. And on the other hand, the CCL plus 20, they need a random group generator, as I mentioned before. And they may need an interactive algorithm for all parties to jointly generate a random group element. And therefore, although their CL, uh, their CK proof for CL ciphertext is less, but they need some other runs of communication for generating a random group element. So they have some hidden cost there. So when, we, when they are all added together to build threshold ECDSA, then uh, the efficiency is in fact uh, less efficient than the method we use here, using our method here. And let's have a look when we go to the um, details about the two-party and threshold ECDSA. So for two-party ECDSA, um, we mainly follow the original two-party ECDSA protocol in Crypto19. And um, for the CK proof part, we actually need to prove something extra following the original protocol in reference one. So we need to prove two more relations here, as shown here. But this adding this relation is simple because they are all discrete log relation. Then we can just simply plug in our existing tools together and then we can uh, effectively prove the seal knowledge for this particular relation. And after plugging that in, this is the result of our overall two-party ECDSA protocol. We can see that the signature size is the same for all these three schemes, but um, we, our scheme has a much better bandwidth than the existing um, two schemes, including the original um, CCL plus 19 paper and their improvement. But of course, we need to um, use the extra security assumption the adaptive root subgroup assumption. But we can achieve a much a very significant saving in terms of bandwidth as well as running time as well. So this is the comparison in terms of running time. We can see that the original paper, um, CCL plus 19, they are very slow in key generation. Um, the improvement, the, the later improvement, they significantly reduce the key gen running time at a cost of doubling the running time of the signing part, which is not desirable. And our scheme, we can, uh, we can show a significant improvement in both the key gen part and while keeping the signing time to be the same. So this is the uh, improvement for our paper. How about threshold ECDSA? Actually, the threshold ECDSA, we have two solutions. They're suitable for different scenarios. For our scheme one, so we modify the threshold ECDSA in PKC 2020. Um, so we modify this for two part. In the key gen part, we update their CK proof of discrete log relation. And in the I sign part, we update their proof of cipher test. So these are the two parts we plug our scheme in. And we have a second solution um, by keeping this um, I sign and the key gen original protocol as the same, but we modify the interactive I setup part. The I setup part is used in the, um, in, in, as part of the I key gen. The I setup part, we modify them using our DL relation. So um, this is the second more, uh, the second scheme, the, um, we modify in a different place of the threshold ECDSA scheme, and uh, we have different improvements. So this table summarizes what are the benefits of these two schemes. So here, this is a complete comparison, and the red rectangle shows the part that is more efficient than others in the same category. So we can see that um, our scheme two, uh, and the original CCL plus 20 paper, they have shorter um, sign signatures. So, uh, but our scheme, um, comparatively, our scheme two has a much shorter bandwidth in terms of I key gen. You can see from here, from this table to this table, but we use one extra assumption, of course. 
So this is our scheme two. Well, on scheme one, we can produce a, a best solution with the shortest bandwidth in IT gen while keeping um, the assumptions to be uh, minimal, but at a cost of a slightly larger part, uh, signature size. So um, maybe um, for those who want to implement this special ECDSA, um, then you should choose one which is more suitable for your application. And we can also show some uh, actual parameters for different threshold using um, different key and different N as shown in this diagram. So this is uh, comparing the CCL20 with um, our scheme to in the IT gen communication and the IT gen running time. So we have a significant improvement in both the IT gen communication size and the running time for different threshold. And how about comparing um, scheme one, scheme two, and the CCL plus 20? So this is the running time for both IT gen and I sign. So we can see that um, a scheme one is very efficient in terms of key gen, but we have a, high, a little bit higher cost for the signing part. So if you want to keep the signing part minimal, then maybe um, you can choose scheme two instead. So this is a very rough compression, and there are some further compression in our paper, so you can refer to them. And to conclude, we propose a complex CK proof for the DL relation in HSM group and also for the CL ciphertest. And when applied to two-party and factual ECDSA, it can significantly improve the performance in terms of bandwidth used and the running time. And that's all for the, my paper. Thank you.